Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to do the pre-configuration, pre-deployment of an on-site job. We have four offices that we're going to be going on-site to and I can film it. So in this video, we're going to unbox all the gear. We have four UDM Pros, we have four 48 port switches, and we have five U6 Pros. We're going to get them all up and running, the firmware updated, the access points and switches adopted, and we're going to get them labeled. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you enjoy watching gaming and live streaming, I do have a Twitch channel, which you could find in the description below. Before I unbox all of the network gear, let's take a look at all the sites. So we have our four sites and I am still waiting on 148 port switch. This S Ajax is the main site. And we're going to put this on the 10.0.1.0/24 network. The S Whippy will be on the 2.0. Brooklyn will be on 3.0, and then Oshawa will be on 4.0. The reason I'm doing that is we're going to be having site-to-site -site VPNs between all these sites. The Ajax site is our main site, and you can see it in a picture here. We're going to end up cleaning up all the cables for this site, ripping out all the Nortel old hardware switches and then putting in our unified deployment. So now I'm gonna play some music, get all this stuff unboxed, and then we'll get it up and running. After unboxing all of the devices, I label each one of the firewalls and the switches. And the reason I do that, even though I know what it is, if I'm not on site and somebody has to power cycle something, it is easy for them to identify. Now we need to run a DAC cable between the UDM Pro and the switch. For our internet connection, I'm just going into a USW 16 PoE light that's connected to my internet. And the last thing we need to do is get all of this equipment powered up. Okay, so now all of our UDM pros and the switches are plugged in and they are up on the internet. We're going to walk through one of them, just the initial setup and switching the default subnet. And then I'll show you in unify.ui.com how you could group all these UDM pros together so it's easier to manage. So we're going to end up doing the main site, which will be called S Ajax. We're going to agree to the terms and service and we're going to press next. Here, I'm gonna sign in with my single sign-on as I'm gonna be managing this Wi-Fi. When we're on step three, this is the update schedule. I'm gonna disable that and press next. Auto optimization, will leave that on for now, but if we do have issues, we will turn that off. We're gonna end up starting a speed test, which we probably won't go too fast because the port I'm plugged into right now is only getting 100 meg per second. All right, we're on step seven and it's starting the setup. Once this finished, we'll get into the Unify OS and then we'll do some updates. So as you could probably tell, this is pretty far behind on firmware. So let's go into our settings. And then under our general settings, we could see that the firmware is 1.8.6, which is well behind. So we're gonna check for an update. We could see that there's an update available and it's gonna update this UDM Pro's firmware from 1.8.6 to version 1.112.22 and we're going to confirm. This will take a few minutes and once we're back we will make sure that our network is up to date and then all of the other controllers are turned off because we don't need them for these sites. So now we can see the UDM Pro firmware has updated and we have network on 7.1.66, protect access talk and UID which we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut down all of these other controllers. We're just going to click on the three dots and then we're going to press stop. Now that those are stopped, let's go into the network controller and change the subnet of our default network. To change the default network, we need to go under our settings. So we'll click on the settings wheel. And then under networks, we'll see the default network, which is on 192.168.1.0. So I'm gonna click on that. From the network, we're gonna deselect auto scale network. And then we're gonna change this to the network of the Ajax site, which is 10.0.1.1. And it will be a slash 24. 
and it will update our DHCP range for us. Then we'll press apply changes. Our default network has changed to 10.0.1.1 as we can see the gateway IP. Now we need to adopt the switch and the two access points that are going to the site. So we'll go over to devices. And as you can see, the UDM Pro is the only thing showing in this list, even though we have a DAC cable connected between the two. Well, the 48 port switches that I have are only one gigabit uplinks. So we need to hard code the speed on the UDM Pro port 11 to be one gigabit. So we'll click on the UDM Pro and then we'll go to our ports and under ports, we're gonna to go to port 11. From here, I'm gonna to go to port profile override and then the link speed, I'm gonna to set to one gigabit full duplex and then we're gonna apply the changes. Now, after setting the SFP plus speed to one gigabit, we could see the USW 48 PoE and then two U6 Pros. So I'm gonna adopt the switch first. And then once that's adopted, I'll adopt the U6 Pros. Now for easy management under unify.ui.com, if you are using the remote access, we could put all of these UDM Pros into a group. At the top, we're just gonna have to hit this plus button and a lot of this stuff will be blurred out. I'll create a new group. I'm just gonna call this UDM test. And then down below, we're gonna select the UDM consoles that will be in this group. So we'll have the S Ajax, the S Brooklyn, the S Oshawa, and then the S Whippy, and then we'll add them. Now within this group, we could see that we have all of our UDM pros. So it's very easy to manage and you can make multiple different groups for multiple different customers that you have. So that's gonna be it for this video and the pre-deployment of these four sites. A lot of people ask me why I do this. Well, the first thing is I like to do hardware burn-in tests. So I'll end up running these for a few days to make sure nothing fails. The last thing that I want to happen is me to go to site with new equipment and then a power supply being broken or something else has a hardware failure. The other reason, some of these sites that we go to don't have the best internet connection. So I wanna make sure the firmware is up to date before putting it into the customer's network. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. Again, if you'd like to watch me live on either Twitch or on YouTube, I do have a Twitch live stream, which I'll be going live a few times a week. Those are in the descriptions and my YouTube live streams are at 11 a.m. EST every Sunday. And if you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.